have a clue what you're talking about. <laughs> Okay, so this week I thought I'd talk about the nervous system and introduce the nervous system. Do some introductions. So a lot of you will need this because this is going to be very introductory. But I know that a lot of people studying anatomy struggle a little bit with the nervous system. I know I did. When I learned the nervous system, we were slicing brains and um, looking at pictures which were in black and white. There was no... I, I didn't understand neuroanatomy. I kind of got the, to grips with the basics and that was about it. Um, since I've been teaching neuroanatomy more and more over the last handful of years, I've had to get to grips with it. And the more I've learned about it, the more I've enjoyed it. It's really, it's, it's intricate and detailed and everything links up and it's very nice. Um, but I thought I'd go over the basics, hopefully 10 minutes or less. And I've asked Annabelle to give me a hand. Because I did think about doing this with a student, but I wasn't sure a student, student would be comfortable. So the reason I'm teaching Annabelle about the nervous system, it's not to be patronising, it's just that Annabelle's interested in this sort of thing, aren't you? Yeah. And I wanted somebody to talk to rather than talking to myself for 10 minutes. Yeah, that would be weird. <laughs> it is though. Thanks. And um, we often talk about anatomy stuff, don't we? Yeah. Oh. So what I want to do is talk about the basics of the nervous system, the cells, how the cells are structured, their axons, you know, all that sort of stuff. And But um, I want Annabelle to ask me any questions that she can think of, if she's actually listening to me. Yes, I am. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So, let's talk about neurons. And then let's talk about how those neurons are organised to form nerves and uh, tracts and that sort of thing. And how the cell bodies are organised in ganglia. And... Ganglia? Mm-hmm. And then we'll talk about the divisions of the nervous system, so, you know, somatic, autonomic, motor, sensory, stuff like that. Should we do that? Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. Do you know what a neuron is? No. So a neuron is a cell. Mm -hmm. right? You know about cells, don't you? Yes. So a neuron is a cell, and a neuron is actually, if you think about it, it's a pretty cool cell. Because it's got the cell body like most other cells, but then it sends out an axon, so it's got like a really, really long tail. Yeah, like a cheetah? <laughs> like a tadpole? Like a tadpole maybe? Like You know like a tadpole's got the body and yeah. they've got the long tail? It's like that, but it's a really, really long tail. And these, these individual cells are really long, right, if you think about it. So you can have a cell, a neuron, that comes out of your spinal cord and then goes all the way down to your big toe. So that one cell is going to be as long as your leg, and there'll be lots of those cells which come together to make a nerve, yeah. right? But think about a whale. How big are those cells in whales? They'd be like they metres and metres and metres long. Well, I guess they do. <laughs> because if you look at the bone of a seal, in, the, in their flippers, the bones, you can see like a thumb in the skeleton of it. Yes. So they have toes. Absolutely. Well, okay, toes. well what about an elephant? An elephant's got toes. Yeah, but tiny ones. Like what do you mean tiny ones? ones? How can an elephant have tiny toes? An they elephant's huge! It must have huge toes! They look like giant mushrooms! <laughs> anyway, yes. so, if a neuron sends its axon out of the spinal cord of an elephant's back, and then butt back, and then that nerve goes all the way down its leg to its toe, that, that's going to be a really long cell, isn't it? So these are some of the biggest cells in the body. And also, what about our dinosaurs, right? That'd be huge. So dinosaurs will have had a neuron coming from their brain, one of their brains, yeah. and then that cell would have gone all the way, way down the dinosaur, out to its feet and its tummy it's and everywhere. Be because Stegosaurus has such a tiny brain, as such as a walnut in his head, he has one in his butt. That's right, because they were so big. So they had more than one brain. They had two brains or two collections of, of central nervous system cells. Oh. So a neuron is a cell in the nervous system, and the job of that cell really is to send an action potential, yeah. like an electrical signal Oops. along it, right? Yeah. So the, the cell gets switched on, boom, sends off the action potential down the other end, sends a signal to the other end, and then it makes a, makes a muscle contract or something. So that would be a motor neuron. Yeah. A sensory neuron would pick up, like, so it can feel that. Yeah. yeah. And then that sensation has run down the, the axon oh of the neuron to the cell yeah. and then to the brain so you could feel it. So, hey, I could use a bit of your paper, couldn't I, and draw it? Yeah, just use a bit more. 
that's handy. So then, all right. Yeah. And those are the basic building blocks of the nervous system. Those are the building important bits. Like there are lots of other cells that support these cells, but these are the important cells. Is it kind of like Lego? Like it is kind of like Lego because cells are like Lego with different Lego bricks and you can build different things, can't you? All right, so if we get a load of axons like this, right? Yeah. You're looking. Yeah. If you get loads of these axons and you run them all together, what do you make? A tree. Nope. Uh, nerve. A nerve. Very good, <laughs> yes. So a nerve is just lots of neurons all bundled together. And they might be going on and doing the same thing, or they might be doing different things. But that's a nerve. It's a monkey. Now if we have lots of... Don't spend, you're never going to know this one. But if you have lots of axons running together within yeah. the central nervous system, say down the spinal cord or in the brain, what do we call that? Yeah. It's a tract. So a, a nerve is what we call a bundle of axons in the peripheral nervous system. So that's all the other nerves. But the central nervous system, which is our brain and spinal cord, if we bundle all the axons together, they're called tracts. All right? So that's what nerves and tracts are. So there are regions in the body where, where cell bodies of neurons all clump together and then axons go off and out and form nerves. Where those cell bodies clump together, if those clumps are in the peripheral yeah. nervous system, they're called ganglia. 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 If they're in the central nervous system, we call them... Leaves. Nuclei. Nuclei. So a nucleus is in the central nervous system and it's a group of cell bodies. That's all that is. Where we have the cell bodies of neurons yeah. collecting together, then often other neurons will come in and they'll synapse. They'll join with those neurons, right? That means you can send a signal to the brain through one, two, three different neurons down to the big toe. Cool. Instead of needing one neuron to go the whole way. Do you know about plexuses? No. So a plexus, yeah. you know nerves, right? Yeah. When nerves all come together uh -huh. and they just like cross over and join together and then disappear off again, but they don't actually connect with each other. They don't actually synapse. It's just like a bundle of wires come in, you bundle them together and they disappear off again. What does that mean? is a plexus. What does synapse mean? Yeah. So a synapse is is like this. There's one neuron, right? Yeah. There's another neuron. Yeah. That's a synapse. Um, okay. So this neuron will send an action potential and it'll go down here. And then it'll send it across to that one, and then it'll go down there to its target. That's a synapse. It's a junction between two neurons. It's like a card junction. If the action potential is like a car, then yeah. It drives down the axon, goes through the junction, drives down another axon. It drives down one road, goes through the junction, drives down another road. Yeah. That's a synapse. So what's the central nervous system? Brain oh. and spine. Brain and spinal cord, yes. Okay. So if there's a central nervous system, there must be a peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system is all the other nerves outside of that. Right? So we can divide the nervous system into two, into central and peripheral. And then we can divide it even more. So we can divide it, for example, into motor and sensory. Um. What does a motor neuron do? It's a motor bike. It makes a muscle move. Motor neuron makes a muscle move, right? Cool, 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 cool. Yes. So what does a sensory neuron do? Sensor? Yeah. Because so that's all the of, name of it. All of these things like Don't touch and temperature um, and pain Ow. and... Yeah, all of those things. And all the senses you're not aware of as well, like measuring your blood pressure yeah. and all those other things. That's all sensory. We can also divide the nervous system into autonomic and somatic. I bet you don't know what those mean. Nope. So somatic, the somatic part of the nervous system is involved in things that you can control with your by thinking about it, right? Hey, boop, boop. That's it. You do, you use your somatic nervous system like I wanna poke to you. poke me. Yeah, exactly. So that's the somatic part of your brain deciding I want to poke you and then 
it moves your muscles through those nerves and you pump. That's somatic. But can you make your heart beat more slowly? No. By thinking about it. No. So your heart is controlled by the autonomic nervous system. Right? Yeah. Food going through your your stomach, inter- your stomach and your intestines. You don't have to think about that, do you? No, you don't have to think doesn't. I'm gonna di- I'm gonna digest my Just tea. go. I'm gonna push that food down my stomach and sp- No, you don't have to think about yeah, that. Yeah, so do like you? I'm just doing that and start dressing. So that's automatic, isn't it? So that's part of the autonomic nervous system that controls that. And that's muscles as well. Ow. Because you've got smooth muscle in your, in your, in your <gasps> small intestine, your large intestine, that's squeezing the food along. So that's the somatic and autonomic nervous systems. And the autonomic nervous system, we break into two again. Into sympathetic and parasympathetic mm-hmm. nervous systems. The sympathetic nervous system is typically described as being involved in fight or flight. Do you know what that is? Flying and fighting. So when were you last like really scared by something? And your heart starts beating and you, you don't know what to do next. And... Maybe when like... When I were in Legoland, we were on that really fast roller coaster one, the big one. That one. Mm. Didn't like that. <laughs> So that's the fight or flight response. And what happens is your body gets flooded with adrenaline and all of the sympathetic parts of the nervous system get activated. When I was horse riding, I I wanted to do the job, but it was too short at the end. That's it, yeah. Because I wanted to do it first, like, what's the jump, and then go over. So that's adrenaline released by the adrenal glands, goes through the blood supply and switches on the sympathetic nervous system. So that, that sends the blood to your muscles... Releases a load of sugar for your muscles. Basically gets you ready to run away or fight something. So the sympathetic nervous system we talked about in the heart in a video recently will increase the heart rate and increase the the force of the heart stroke as well. Um, The parasympathetic nervous system is typically described as being the rest and digest part of the autonomic nervous system. So the parasympathetic nervous system is, uh, is the one that... Um, is involved with the GI tract and sends, looks after that. peristalsis, pushing food down the GI tract and, and all that sort of stuff. Oh. The major nerve of the parasympathetic nervous system is the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is a cranial nerve, and a cranial nerve just means that this is a nerve that comes straight out of the brain. So there are 12 cranial nerves, they come out of the brain. The cranial nerve 10 is the vagus nerve, and it's a big parasympathetic nerve, and it descends down the neck, finds the esophagus, follows the esophagus down into the abdomen, um, and sends parasympathetic nerve fibres to the, uh, the neck, the thorax, the abdomen, but not no, into the pelvis. The parasympathetic nerves of the pelvis come out of the sacral part of the spinal cord. And there are other parasympathetic cranial nerves in the head. The sympathetic nervous system comes from uh, the spinal cord between levels T1 and L2. And all of the parasympathetic and sympathetic neurons are motor. Which means they control muscle. Yeah. Right? Okay. So not like a motor bike. Mm. If we think about the sensory part of the nervous system, um, we've got somatic sensory that we talked about. So when you get touched, you can feel it. Um, and you can feel that being stuck to your finger. But Sticky. there are also there are, there are visceral sensory neurons as well. And there's another couple of words we can use. We can use afferent and efferent to describe nerves. Afferent and efferent? Afferent describes nerves that are going back towards the brain, yeah. back towards the central nervous system. Um, efferent nerves, or efferent mm-hmm. nerves, are nerves that are coming out of the brain. Yeah. So, so, so essentially you've got motor and sensory. Efferent and afferent. Right? Yep. Cool. So then a visceral efferent nerve... I look like an eight. Yeah, nice. A visceral efferent nerve or a visceral efferent nerve describes a nerve that is sensory to something that you're not particularly aware of, something that's autonomic. So, for example, the nerves that are sensing the blood pressure in your neck, those will be visceral efferents, visceral efferents. Um, the nerves that are sensing what's going on in your GI tract, those will be visceral efferents. These are often confused with other parts, with other parts of the autonomic nervous system. They travel with the sympathetic nerves often, but they're not sympathetic nerves. Sympathetic nerves are motor, visceral efferents are sensory. 
And these visceral efferents will often travel with the sympathetic nerves just because that's the way the nerves develop. They're all running together. So they'll run back into the spinal cord. Have you got any questions about all of that? Mm. Is there anything you want to know about the nervous system? Yeah. What? Why does the left side of your brain control the right side and the right side control the left side? So this side of your brain... It sends out nerve axons that we were talking about, which we'll call tracks because they're in the central yes. nervous system. And they cross over to the other side of your body at some point and Just then like they go down. Boop. Yeah, so the sensory stuff crosses over at some point and the motor stuff also crosses over. Which is why the left side of your brain controls most of the right side of your body. That's not 100% true. Mostly it's true. So we've talked about neurons yeah which are the cells of the nervous system yeah. we've talked about action potentials mm -hmm. which is the signal going along the neuron in the axon we've talked about synapses which is two neurons communicating together yeah. and neurons communicating that with other things yeah uh, we've talked about what nerves are bundles of axons okay. what tracts are they're also bundles of axons but in the, in the central nervous system we've talked about ganglia and Ganglion. We've talked about ganglia and ganglion. a ganglion and Bananas. nucleus, which are groups of cell bodies. We've nice. talked about a plexus, which is nerves just crossing over each other. Um, and we've talked about the divisions of the nervous system. Somatic, stuff you've got control over. Oh, wow. Autonomic, <laughs> stuff you do automatically. Okay. Sympathetic and parasympathetic, which are part of the autonomic nervous system, and both are motor. And we've talked about afferent and efferent, with visceral efferent nerves being sensory nerves from viscera, stuff you're not really aware of. Um, yeah. How's that? Good. Do you think we did a good job? Yeah. Were you even listening to anything I said? Yeah. Really? Yeah. If I give you a test on this, how many marks do you think you'll get out of ten? One. <laughs> 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 I hope that was useful. I kind of doubt that it was. But hey, it's better to put something out than nothing. Thank you, Annabelle, for helping me. You're welcome, Daddy. I'll pay you in biscuits now. Yeah. Uh, it's good.